the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture mental health to economics relationships to life lessons join us each and every tuesday from 7 to 8 pm on WAC 90.1 fm the living room casual conversations on serious topics It is currently um, 6 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked on to the true nation station, WACK 90.1 FM, where we are. Culture c -c 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 crazy. Why are you drinking coffee at 6 o'clock any night? Jedi, I'm a creative. All right, when everybody else going into bed and getting up to go to work in the morning, I will be up all night toiling, burning the candle at both ends, editing people's videos so that they could watch us on YouTube. Not a problem. Let's kick this program off as we always do, all right? Must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gift of life and seeing another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to those that went before us, and we are not just talking about our ancestors, the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago, because we all know, accept, reiterate, and they say it with the chest that Columbus lied. But also to our brother in music, Tony Prescott, where the P this week stands for parliamentary. Privilege. Parliamentary. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say privilege too. Well, you know, technically, the real parliamentary privilege, the fact that we could select and elect our representatives and have them come together to make decisions in the interest of our behalf, that's a of privilege. Themselves. You know what, Aaron? P is also for parentheses. Let them brackets, I just put them little snide comments in that. I just end up coming and saying on air and have people thinking that you're a good boy and I just trouble so. Um, yeah, boy. Um, the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. Boy, oh boy, have they made some interesting decisions over the past week and more. What about the 47 right? years? I know, oh, wow. 61. No, well, Parliament really only um, coming to play. Cody was coming to when we became a republic in, That's right. Right? in 1976. Um... No, but really and truly, the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago has made some very interesting decisions. And most, more interestingly enough, we must continue to reiterate that one party in Trinidad and Tobago has held the helm for at least 80% of that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As Wendell Goodrich says in, in his, his my, one of my favorite clips was, who to blame? Let me just take a sip of tea from a dingle cup here. Anyway, let me um, get down to some things. If you don't know the program you're listening to, this is The Living Room with the Australian DJ Aaron 868, where I remind you that Cultia is my code, alongside my bro bro with no fro, but a lot of flow. Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage. And we, we have come here um, on the last Tuesday of September to discuss trinidad and things that are happening in trinidad or have been happening and are going to happen in trinidad and tobago by extension um let me just show real quickly the jersey if you don't know the, yeah. CP, the, the the meme pl sorry the cpl final was held on sunday night mm -hmm. and guyana on the sixth time of trying no sorry seventh no six six final yeah this is the, the sixth, sixth final? final? Yeah. Okay. On the sixth time of trying, oh, coincidentally, that six is right above my head, has won the CPL for the first time. So congratulations to the Guyana Amazon Warriors on copying their first CPL title in quite nonchalant fashion, I must admit. You know, uh, I think it was an excellently executed season. I believe that they had one of the strongest teams in terms of there was a consistent uh, collective performance. Uh, Imran Tahir is a brilliant leader and for a 43, 44 year old cricketer, I think that his athleticism and passion for the game is still inspiring. So, and his, his ability to sprint from the pitch down to the boundary to celebrate our wicket as well. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So as far as I'm concerned, um, I had to give 
Jack his jacket. The, this if this was a if there was a year to win, this, this was no, honestly. Um, before I continue, commiserations to the TKR team on losing their first final in five. Does I personally think that for a team that didn't come out of the group stage last year, um, and will rebuild in. Mm-hmm. This was an excellent return. Remember no, well, last year? Like, well, I, I just say, I just say last year. They no, I, I, I didn't, they didn't do anything last year. They actually, did, I didn't even think they played cricket last year. But um, wow. who's me? I don't play cricket, so I don't know. Um, I'm a keyboard warrior when it comes to cricket, honestly. Really? Yeah. I, have, I have footage of you in multiple stadia. That don't mean that's not keyboard warrior. All right, cool. I'm sure, you just be on your phone half the time. And not just that, I also don't know the pressure of being in the middle or being in the field in a high pressure game like that. I also have footage of you playing cricket in a very high pressure at a at, at three hour T10 earlier this year. I find you have real footage of me. Yeah? This is quite alarming and worrying. I'm starting to think that you are Google or something. Uh, I'm just a fan here. I'm just a fan. Anywho, um, but all in all, for me, the Ghana Amazon Warriors, mm-hmm. the Trinbago Knight Riders, all right. the St. Lucia Kings, mm-hmm. Barbados Royals, and the Jamaica Talawas, and the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots, mm-hmm. right? They went through a grueling four to five week tournament, mm-hmm. right? And for me, what I'm very elated to see. Players like She Hope, mm-hmm. Shimron Hetmeyer, yes, Shane Rutherford, mm-hmm. Casey Carty, mm-hmm. Nicholas Pura. Players that play for the West Indies or can play for the West Indies, putting forward scintillating performances, which gives me hope that with good leadership and good selection policies by the board, I am praying for this one. That come 2024 T20 World Cup, which is going to be held in the West Indies and the United States of America, we can put forward a good showing. A curious too. Uh, Fabian Allen, Fabian Allen, let's get call up. Well, you see, that's the next thing. A lot of these players would have made themselves unavailable for selection for some time. Oh. I have seen that Andrew Russell is going to call him Jerry Ross. But mm-hmm. for those of you who don't follow cricket avidly, as both Ricardo and I do, um, Andrew Russell has made himself available for selection for T20 cricket again. Good. So I await to see over the next couple of months how many of our um, touring players, I'll just loosely call them that, Good. those that play in the various leagues around the world, continue to make themselves available for selection for us to put our best possible team on the field come 2024 what we've also seen from the cpl is that the strongest team on paper might not necessarily be the best performing team all right let's say hypothetically that we had five elite level t20 players on the same team last night who all lost their wickets to taking pace off the ball i personally think um some of these guys being available for selection no if look at look at the look at five of the wickets that tkr lost last night and tell me that you would have seen any of those performances in an ipl final no i'm not taking anything away from the guy and he's bowling i'm just saying that it was phenomenal phenomenal bowling and fielding you cannot take that away from them but what i'm saying is that there was a you you watch five i'm not talking top class here i'm talking elite level performers these men could walk onto any cricket team in the world these men are paid all money for the experience and the skill set that they have so like pollard pollard bravo pura narine narine russell dre ross and, and by extension, it. Akil Hussein, because Akil Hussein also plays in the IPL. Right, but he's a, he relatively newer to that level than those guys are. Those guys have years 
yeah. of high pressure, high pain international cricket under the belt. Yes, I'm not saying Akil do happy thing, but look at those names. Those names are five names that you're guaranteed to hear on somebody IPL roster for I'm sure about five years now or more. Five? I'm I being conservative because Pura oh, still man. youngish. Youngish? We still we still call him man Nikki P because we we talk about when he come out of school. And what I'm saying is, they think he calls himself Nikki P because that's it on the back of the jersey, like even the one I have on right now. All right. I just say I had a feeling that Pura is he had on. All I'm saying, if I'm South Dog, is that for what these fellas bring to the game and to their teams to watch five of them capitulate and, last night in that manner and for me it's, it's not just the the pace of the ball eh, ricardo um it was also the fact that a lot of them were chasing balls outside of the line of the off stump and looking to play across their bodies you can't a- tell me who don't play cricket know that if the ball outside the line of off stump should I say to that? Me who play cricket professionally. No, if the ball outside the line of stump, you play in line with the ball. If the ball is in front of you, you play straight. If the ball is at hip height, you come across. Here now. Pretorius. Uh, again, I just a keyboard. I just a keyboard warrior. Daniel Pretorius has been a devastating bowler for the entire season. He beat Puran on four out of the five balls that he faced in that over. And on the last over, the short Don't forget ball, the drop catch. Well, the, the, right? That was he beat Puran, right? Mm-hmm. On all. Everybody facing that over. And on the final ball, the man dropped it short. And instead of just surviving the over, because you nah, know how to, you know how to, and they miss. second life. Right? You decide you to, want to attack. Right. So what I'm saying is... You feel you use Iron Man. I cool. I cool last night. Let me put it this way. I anyway, enjoyed watching um, some fascinating sports. Um, Big up Guyana. Yeah. Big up the US um, of the region. Yeah. But... um, The, the, the two prime ministers. I see... Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 sorry, the president of Guyana. And Marshall yeah, Montano. I see way but... <laughs> uh, but you make me forget what's going to say actually but all in all I am pleased with the tournament mm-hmm. I am pleased that we got to witness some quality cricket here both in the Oval and in Baranara right I was we get to see uh, Nic- Nicholas Buran make 100 Ricardo live I personally find a lot of the games were boring though 50%. Uh, and oh god, I have six teams in the old tournament and half of the game's boring. Mm. You could see there's a golfing class between the top three teams and then the bottom three teams. But you don't want to get into that. That is a whole cricket conversation and I feel we need to have a cricket connoisseur here to have that conversation. But all in all, um, we are looking for the ICC 50 over World Cup starts in October and yeah, next week that next week West Indies is not going to be a part of it so we have some cricket to watch um the T20 World Cup is coming to the West Indies and America next year games are coming to Trinidad both Ricardo and I am 100% sure we may randomly bounce up at a game yeah, yeah, yeah. apparently or that's we'll, how it works yeah or we'll plan to go a game but remember even before that England is coming to the West Indies in December and I'm 100% sure Ricardo and I will bounce yep. up at a game again yep that that is happening yeah cricket come on christmas and cricket christmas and cricket that is happening the eight and a ham sandwich in, in the stadium <laughs> nothing better than that anyhow Bangers um, and mash <laughs> anyhow guys um that was in terms of cricket i had to vend that cricket but yeah sorry. we had, had to start off with that um in other sport related news we continue to impress in non traditional sporting categories mm-hmm. i.e. swimming cycling even gymnastics 
right? But outside of that, what I must admit, I don't want to get into that video, Ricardo. Um, well, what video? What are you talking about? Okay, cool. You didn't see it, so I won't go and bring it up. Um, other than that, what I must continue to commend is that outside of the sporting culture of Trinidad and Tobago, the artistic culture continues to thrive. I must commend a young man who hails from Marbella. I, I know you hear Marbella and you get proud. I just am um, not so young anymore, Aaron. But well, I know what. Commend I must commend a young man who hails from Marbella. He goes by the name of Jaden Bain. Mm-hmm. He's a young artist and his work has been featured at numerous exhibits. Mm-hmm. Not to name the one at the Red House recently. But he has been doing some excellent work and I think we need to give him some flowers to not just you know um push him to continue to do the work Mm -hmm. but to also let him know that his work is being noticed he's a student from asja boys college in san fernando and i'm a hundred percent sure that his parents and his grandparents are very proud of the work that he does and the work that he's going to continue to do right so Jaden Bean this is your moment congratulations to you and we hope that you continue to strive to do better happy future of the republic boy yeah boy right also for those of you who are into plays a brighter sun is going to be held this weekend if you want to go out and support please do so I think I'm going to go on Saturday night you my first run yeah, I missed the last one, so I'm gonna make it my business to go there on Saturday night. And next week, before we we start the show properly, I will tell you how my experience was of going to the play a brighter song. Yeah, I went the last time, uh, Ari Theater Productions, the mm-hmm. game. It was great. I didn't even realize um, Harmony was in it. Yeah, because it's actually Harmony who sent me the artwork. Yeah, and yeah. It uh yeah I it was great it was it was amazing production I thoroughly enjoyed it there's there are school showings available and then there are the two matinee shows I think it's well the matinee is the school shows that is Thursday the matinee Friday. school show yeah and then Saturday night at eight pm and I think Sunday night at eight pm as well no I had to <laughs> figure out why I thought matinee was the main you know going out that's why I was drinking coffee you know. Yeah, to wake up the brain. An um, afternoon performance, Kirk is right. Was the original <laughs> the word though? I don't know, but big up Mr. and Mrs. Lee Mack for their work that they would have done um, in teaching me the intricacies of theatre when I was in press con choir back in the day and we did the musicals. I'm, I'm not surprised you did theatre. You do have a flair for the dramatic, especially in your hyperbolic retellings of your personal experiences. But go ahead. I just had to train <laughs> some. I just had to train some words after I mess up Martinina. You know? uh, <laughs> yeah, big up, big up, uh, big up well, I, not big I, up. I um, salutations and congratulations to the teachers who continue to influence. So whereas we have the future of the Republic, let me talk about the foundations of the Republic as well too. I uh, noticed that there were one or two awards given out this weekend. Oh, one of be- which went to a, pre- a presentation a college. I, I don't even know if he's still a teacher at prayers or, or, or what because... <laughs> <laughs> but, I, um, his, I famous, somebody... his famous line um, that we all would remember for those who went prayers was play my ball, play my ball youngster. youngster. And I think there's still a chant today. Yep. Um, Mr. Leslie Hoyt. Mm-hmm. He was awarded. Let me get the, the information here. Because I scrolled up so much times on this one article just to keep the um, the laptop from locking. You know, you could go into settings. Anyway, let me not tell you how to do your thing. Uh, yes, this, I... the, the laptop had to reset, boy. You know, he never... Mr. I've Leslie never Ruben Hoyt. Him. Yes, he Ruben. has. Yeah, he has a profound impact in the field of sports and physical education, the role for which he may perhaps be well known in his function as a PE teacher and a physical trainer to the Trinidad and Tobago National Under-20 team, which he participated in the 5th Youth World Cup in Portugal in 1991. And jokingly enough, that team included Dwight York, Clayton Ince, 
and the now national coach of the Trinidad and Tobago football team, Angus Eve. Yeah. Yeah. As and we lovingly refer to him, Whitey has been doing it big for a while. Yeah, long right. time. And if um, I'm not mistaken, he was doing um he was doing some international touring with Jan Westmas. Who's also yeah, but... I know him because he used to live Maribel right up the hill from me and his wife used to teach at prayers as well. She was a very influential very and a very and... fit as well. But yeah, they were the marathon runners. <laughs> yeah, uh, st- they still are. D- dominant. So I... the, the the combination of our athletics and academics is definitely we, we see the value of it. And how far reaching the, the tendrils can be once properly watered and maintained. And um, you know, there's all oh, these fun stories of of persons, right? You ever heard the story of when Mr. Hoyt was the the as I said, the physical trainer for the team, and he ran out to attend to play and he pulled a hamstring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the old we had a gas stretcher for the man <laughs> carrying the stretcher yeah yeah, yeah but right um but also we must commend the persons who would have been awarded the nation's highest honor the order of the republic of trinidad and tobago professor clement imbert currently serves at the university of west indies as a professor in mechanical and metallurgical engineering i don't know what metallurgical engineering is um professor john agard he is the di- executive director at the Global Institute for Climate Smart and Resilient Development at the University of the West Indies. Dr. Path Manathan Umparan. I hope I pronounced that correctly. You should have checked that before you start to read it on the People Radio. Right. Oh, go ahead. Fun memories again for you, Ricardo. Is the yeah. director of the Coco Research Center at the University of the West Indies. Right, those are the persons who won the order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. And just to say, I honestly, I still thought the awards used to be Independence Night, but now they are Republic Night. You only remember they have the parade already in the morning. They have to give yeah. Republic Day something of distinction. And uh, as I say, Republic Day, I want to shout out Shell Invaders. Okay, right, Good. a band they hail from Tragedy Road in Port of Spain. I can't remember the number, mm-hmm. right. They had a very successful Pan Juve yesterday morning. Where Pan took the road at 4 a.m. in Port of Spain, finished at 9. And if you think they was finished then, they went back to the Pan Yard for more Pan until 1 p.m. Hmm. When this was? Yes. Well, sorry, Sunday. Sunday morning, Republic Day morning, my bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice one. But technically, have... we had two Republic Days this year, so. Yeah, thank God for this holiday yesterday. But oh my gosh, it was so much needed. Yeah, especially people needed to recover after watching our cricket Sunday night. Well, actually, no, cricket finished early enough that you could have go man, get a full night's sleep. Half past 10. 10, <laughs> 10 23 to be specific. Uh, yeah, um, after, after cricket, I actually went on, I, I, I went somewhere, I went to a whole Latin dance. Um, uh-huh. afterwards. Yeah, Latin, yeah, Latin dancing, no? I am I am becoming more familiar with the community and the events because yeah, but it's something that uh you know what I could see I could see why people love it yeah I but chattering people love it actually but chatter seems to be the easiest thing for me to um, like yes, mentally wrap my mind around the other things are still too busy trying to count yeah but yeah, anyway I... you know all, 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 all that all that all that um. All that in due time. All that in due time. At the end of the day, yeah, I am right. one eight. Well, my grandmother is Venezuelan, and my name is Ricardo. I figure between that and going on six hundred days in Duolingo, you know, maybe I should start exploring you know, all the other elements of my genetic makeup. Big up saying kids too. Mm-hmm. Big up saying mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I have some, I have some Portuguese in me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can see. Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna do one of them tests, you know. See what makes up the Republic of Ricardo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, uh, some American in me too, apparently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and Indian. So it's really just to finally um mm-hmm. 
you know, tick the boxes. So the cat course on my dog, cat course. I'm mm-hmm. a trini. I is a trini. Mm-hmm. And as I actually mentioned, the um Venezolano element. I just want to quickly update a position that I had several weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I am of the opinion that if you are going to be representing a country, right, it would be best advised that you are fluent in the national language of that country. I would like to amend that point by adding that if you are going to represent any organization or entity in a pageant, that one should be properly prepped um, as to the, 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 not just the nuances of said culture, organization or entity, but the foundations of it. Right? You can't tell me that when somebody asks you, where's the national watchwords at Trinidad? I have to go. go. Ricardo, sorry. Sorry, no, Ricardo. I'm very very sorry. I have to go. (laughs) But I know know you have to go. I know why you have to go. (laughs) Right? Um, No, no. Honestly, this is twofold for me. Tengo que ir, you know. Anyway, go ahead. This, this This is twofold for me. Firstly, when you have someone of that ilk coming into an interview, when they say that of that ilk, meaning of a title, right? I just right. Say. Okay, cool. Of a be, title, you gotta be, you gotta be clear, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Someone of of a title coming in to do an interview, ninety mm-hmm. percent of the time you are supposed to let them know the questions before you bring them in for the interview. Right. So there may have been so, an element of ambush journalism. Thank you. So that's my first issue in that scenario mm-hmm. because some of the questions were not about the pageant. Right. They were about her legibility to be a representative of the pageant and not just her, the person who also won Mr. Grant. Mm -hmm. So for me, firstly, I must address the poor level of journalism, which appeared to be ambush journalism. I counterpoint. But but, but, put up in, put up in. I have to ask you this as a professional. If you were bringing in a maths Olympiad student, would it have been considered ambush journalism to ask him a math question? That was not going to say. But, mm-hmm. I'm, and that's for the first part of the interview because a lot right. of persons only saw the part of right. the interview where it, she said, I want to go, I right, want to go. Yeah. yeah, everybody only studied that part. Mm-hmm. I'm studying the first, let's say, 10 minutes of the interview where he started to ask about her personal relations with people. Right. Pictures which would have been posted to social media. Mm-hmm. The, the relation of the Mr. Grant to certain persons on the panel or the, right. the things like on the board. That is the ambush journalist that I'm speaking about. Mm. However, to her PR team now, the persons who are supposed to be prepping her to quote Oliver McQueen, you have failed this city. <laughs> <laughs> this man makes up all of our Queen and Steve McQueen, you know. But I get where you're going with it. Yeah. Kirk is right. How could you have somebody who is representing the red, white, and black Trinidad and Tobago and not teach them A the national watchwords? Full level education. That is copy. This is this is copybook. This thing. is on the back of the copybook. This is copy. Uh, sorry, but we don't know that anymore because we have not we, seen the back of a copy book in a long while. All I've seen is big back, when we were in second, back when we was in primary school, they had that kind of information. Yeah, how can I take it? Yeah, how can I take it? That was even Google. Ta- even tables. The back of the copy book was Google. Yeah. Right. Right? But yeah. I the basic information, what are the watchwords of Trinidad and Tobago? Discipline, tolerance, and production. Now you have become a meme mm-hmm. that the fourth, the fourth, um, you're trying to make <laughs> over my watchwords now. It's a you're taking my be. shine. It's supposed to be subsidy, but now all of a sudden is I have to go. Come on. You're taking my shine away from me. Why? I, I get it. Now, if we look at, um, we take case right. in point, these, um, these street side game shows, like what you know. A lot of trainees don't know a lot of the basics. Fair. But if you are being chosen for representing Trinidad and Tobago, then you're expected to have at least a serviceable knowledge base of the thing you're representing. So 
in terms of updating my position, hey, I get it. There's a, there's a culture of very dedicated, hardworking people who a lot of Chinese are intimidated by. And quite frankly, they fall to figure out. That is not for me to tell you how to <laughs> fix because all there are no problems with all your cousin and them going to the people and them Brooklyn and Toronto and UK and, you know, traveling all over the world to create opportunities for better lives for themselves. You have no problem with your cousin and your auntie and your mommy and them doing it. But you're vexed when people coming into your country trying to do it for themselves. All I see in is in this particular case, that does nothing to the, to the type of xenophobia that people exhibited. This, this, set, this, set, this sets the movement back. Um, you know, I for one have lo- commended the United States of America on their use of naturalizing citizens. Mm-hmm. If you look at the American national men's football team or soccer team, if you want to call it that, right? Mm-hmm. How many of them could you say are actual born Americans? Right? I long for the day that I see Juan Carlos. I don't know why I just think that's a, a Venezuelan name. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. But so you you um Aaron Jr. are going to be Juan Carlos. Juan no, Carlos no. Williams. That you have a ring to it though. I just saying Juan Carlos Williams, you know, JC Williams. That that song in that song yeah. like a that song like a professional athlete name, you know. Exactly, and a scholarship yeah. winner. Exactly. But no, it tennis. Mid, middle name Ricardo, eh? Because since I, I named that real names, boy. But Juan anyway. Carlos Ricardo Williams. I mean, I I had a game middle name. I call it. I call it. Look, we in 2023. This might not come to fruition until God alone knows when. But now it's on the record. Ricardo forgot. But anyway, I, I can have enough culture and I do check up one. Right. That for me to that for me to sort yeah. out. You go yeah, ahead. So, uh, right. Mm-hmm. But I've I, I've continuously applauded America's use of naturalizing citizens Mm -hmm. right but you also look at it that for them to become naturalized citizens of america they have to do uh what we would call a test of where they need to learn about the country Mm -hmm. and i think if we are going this way in trinidad and tobago we need to implement some sort of testing method or criteria to ensure that if you are becoming a naturalized citizen of our country or you are going to represent us on a global stage, you have a basic understanding of one, what it is to be a Trini, and two, a basic understanding of the history of our country. Mm-hmm. Because it can't be that I'm asking you what year you became an independent nation and you are telling me 1972. Did that happen? No, no, I'm just saying. I just got yeah. a wrong answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, if you are going to represent us on a global stage, be it that you are born Trinidad, you know not. You should have a basic understanding of what it is to be a Trini and the history of Trinidad and Tobago. You can't tell me the national anthem, the first word is fudged. You're bigger than you have sense. The first word is forged. Hey, big up. Big up. Um... It's Pat Castagna. Patrick um, Castani. Castani. Yeah. That's a proper pronunciation. I Am do I... hope so because I was told that I botch names very frequently <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the living room. Thank you very much for that, Damien. For that constant reminder that I need to look on my enunciation and my pronunciation of persons' names. Thanks very much, hey, Damien. That's an indicator that you read more than your, your talk. It has happened. Um, anyway, I just saying this is not even a trini, right? Or national anthem. Right. Spyro is not a trini. Right. Derek Chin of Movie Tongue is not a trini. Right. What I'm saying is, what what is it to be a trini when most of us, most of our parents came from somewhere else? And if it's not your parents, it's your grandparents, because everybody you know. The Grenadian influence, the Vinci influence, the Venezuelan influence. And this is just regional and territorial migration. Right? What we're saying is what what does it how 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 far back you have to be here to be a trainee? And if it's a case of how we we're not measuring from how far back, 
Well, then what does it take now? You know, how, how, how much do I have to sow into the country to be a trainee? Because most trainees right now not actually sowing into the country. Actually, maybe not most, but a fair percentage of trainees not sowing into the country. Right? There are a lot of people putting in a lot of work that flies under the radar and is keeping this place afloat. I want to big up the We Can Beat Cancer Foundation. They had a, children, a children's concert and fundraiser in Sapper last weekend. And here I telling you. It that was Saturday night? Saturday, the previous Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um... Oh, that's... Oh, okay, right, right, right. It was... It was... Heartbreaking. To hear the stories of some of these kids, these young ambassadors, for something that they should be. They have no right to be fighting. And... As to see these kids going through school, writing SEA, doing exams and that type of thing while they're undergoing treatment. Uh, to see some kids have to drop out of school because they can't do both. These children fighting cancer and the people who put in the work to give them a fighting chance at life. Uh, it was a very sober reminder that there are a lot of people putting in a lot of work to keep Trinidad going. And it's not just about us as a nation, but it's about the people. It's about the people. And there are people who have very different problems to the ones that we have. You know, uh, I I get it. While to somebody it might seem like a, a moot point to be arguing on whether or not an unrecognized organization uh, entering a pageant or not. And whether or not the woman could speak English is a small thing when there's another when there are more pressing issues like the multiple murders of children. Children. When stuff like that going on and somebody else arguing about I have to go. And it seems frivolous. You have to remember that if that matter of national identity is important to that person well then let it be because somebody have to fight for that too let somebody focus on hey this crime thing is a problem let somebody focus on teachers need support let somebody focus on kids fighting cancer let somebody focus on maintaining cultural identity stop picking other people problems for them figure out what is your problem and find a way to contribute to the country now because I have a lot of people putting in a lot of work. And while we say no fighting no fighting no, things not getting solved. So yeah, that is my Republic Day message. Speaking of Republic Day messages, so big up. Dana Tanku with Please and Tanku. Hello friends, my name is Dana Tanku and today I'm going to be sharing a thought or two with you. Happy Republic Day and since we're in the season of Independence Day and Republic Day, I figured I'll share some things that I've learned with you. So Republic Day is all about celebrating the significant feat of having a TNT government which excluded the British crown and monarchy as heads. And I don't know about all here, but politics is one of the most annoying topics to me personally because deep down inside, I would have seen well, we would have seen our own ethnicities, beliefs, religions used as weapons for Pekong and Discord and that didn't really sit well with me. But something I learned for this Republic Day, I'll share with you. So TTT usually has an Independence Day and a Republic Day program that usually highlights the intricacies of our history that may have been overlooked because they were ingrained in our culture. So one of these tidbits it, that I like to share is the ethnic animosity and divide in Trinidad and Tobago. And that has played a major role in our culture and therefore our politics. But this was not created here. That was actually a legacy of colonialism. So in the Republic Day program from TZT, um, the late Professor Emeritus Brinsley Samaru would have highlighted this very fact. 
We've seen the Afro Trini versus Indo Trini war time and time again, but as I said before, this divide was never created here. It was deliberately created by colonial powers in a policy called divide and rule. And let me ask you something do you think it's worked? Because I believe it's worked. Because Republic Day was 47 years ago, and in 2023, we still see the essence of divide and rule in our culture and politics today now this policy was actually considered in the writing of our constitution and sir hugh wooden who would have written our constitution actually considered this divide and rule policy and the effects of it and made very strict recommendations when it came to changing up our constitution modifying it as time went on and i do believe it's time for these things to now be reconsidered and be re-implemented for us to now catalyze our development and become that multi-ethnic nation in unity as many of our national songs would boast so now that we have this knowledge what can we do we have a duty to the generations after us to break out of the mindsets that colonialism has molded into the generations before us. We have the mental capacity to break out of the shackles of having been divided and ruled. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit curious to see when and how our constitution will be revised so that we can let it be known around the world that we can boast of unity and take our pride in our liberty. Please and thank you. So you're in your pencil mood, Iran. Let me hear you. Every, as you tell me, Ricardo, sometimes the cause doesn't choose the champion. Right? There are many things that we need to continue to strive for in Trinidad and Tobago to do better. Crime is not a governmental issue. Crime is a social issue. Yes, the government needs to put measures in place to protect the citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago, right? In terms of better scanning of containers, more secure borders, better policing or more policing and things like that. But I'm not going to address things like that because there's a whole other conversation that may need to have happen. What I'm going to say is that not because a man park somewhere that he may not support is, isn't supposed to park on, on the government road means that he needs to threaten his life all of a sudden we have gone from a lovable culture to one of aggression i don't know what has brought about this change right there are many things which a lot of us suspect but i'm not going into that what i think needs to happen is that we need to go back to an era on air of care for a fellow man because i cannot sit on another morning and read a headline where four persons no older than the age of 20 were killed i cannot sit on another morning and read headlines where five end up in the hospital i can't see another headline that this one missing for three weeks and you can't get a note and the one person who know where there is living life like normal where is the level of accountability in our society where if you know something went wrong you say something because you are the one that could help us find somebody where is the level of accountability in society that if you know you're not supposed to be doing something you see the person doing it you tell them Dan, that's not something you should be doing we have gone to a society where we so care about ourselves and what we want to achieve that we are looking at people in Trinidad and Tobago falling by the wayside and just leaving them there. We talk about holding our leaders accountable for the things that they are supposed to do, but we're not holding ourselves and our fellow man accountable. That is the fundamental change that needs to happen if we want to see Trinidad and Tobago reach that better place. If I had to say a Republic Day message, that would be my message. But what I would also want to say, another serious issue in Trinidad and Tobago. You see Forex? Shh. You're no. What are you doing? No, it has to happen here. You're what are you doing? 
You Ricardo, can't, you can't use the F word on air, Aaron. Oh, that's the F word I thought was food. Anyhow, <laughs> right? Um, Ricardo, I'm gonna ask you because you don't have an accounting background or a financial background, right? Mm. If you pay for something with your credit card, right? What currency do you think the bank has to pay the foreign company? Well, I uh, reckon it would be the petrodollar, brother. USD. Right. And where do you think the bank gets that money from? Not from the available daily limit. Does each bank have a limit that they can access? Or is there an available daily limit to me as an individual with an account in that bank? The bank as a whole. The bank as a whole. So some organization who has the bag is now going to say, your as your organization is only allowed this amount. Yeah. Okay, so let's say there was like a, a centralized bank or something that was responsible for issuing currency to other banks. That's, that's the type of thing you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, but where this centralized bank would be getting the foreign currency from though? From trading. Mm -hmm. But that, that leads me to ask another serious question. What industry mm -hmm. in Trinidad and Tobago is, is generating any substantial level of US dollars through exports? That's a really good question, Aaron. And I mean, I, I know there was one thing that was generating a steady supply of USD, but well, it was a drain on the economy or something of the sort. And we'll share that coming up too. But anyway, you know, so that's a legitimate question. No, what are we doing to earn tradable income? No, Sorry, only tradable no. currency. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, all in as a man just try to break it down as much as possible, right? Yeah. But we currently, because banks have, have, have reduced the amount of available monies towards the customers, right? And there are persons of social media prevalence and political prevalence who come on social media to talk about it, talking about this is what is stifling the small businessman in Trinidad and Tobago. But if we are not producing our own goods and only rely on imports mm -hmm. without viably feeding the system with a return of foreign exchange, how do you expect a system to maintain? If all you're doing is picking from the mango tree every year, but you're not watering it, how, you don't think the mango tree is going to die? If you put a mango tree in a dome and mm -hmm. it gets in sunlight, mm. That's all it gets in sunlight. You're not watering it. And you keep picking it every time the mango falls. You walk in the dome and you pick it. But you're not watering that tree. How do you expect the tree to survive? Admittedly, the government has to do something to keep the orchard alive. But, and that's what I say, if we have to go into things the government should be doing, that's a whole other episode. But what I'm saying is, you're talking about the stifling the small man, the stifling the middle class. But what is the middle class doing as well to ensure that the forex that is needed to keep the system alive is put back in? Because when you when you, when you buy from Amazon to sell a 10 hundred percent markup, not percent, but that's 100 percent. Right? Yeah. When you're doing that, the bank have to pay for what you buy on Amazon in the US. Mm -hmm. When you buy from Shein and you pay. Eight dollars and eight cents for a shirt, but you sell me it for three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Where you think the eight dollars and eight cents coming from? The bank had to find that to pay. Mm -hmm. When we have so many local designers who struggling for customers, because you know what, I can't afford to pay designer X five hundred dollars for a shirt. I will go and share and buy it for eight dollars and eight cents. But that is what is draining our forex reserves in Trinidad and Tobago. Not to mention as well the purchase of luxury vehicles. I, I don't want to get into that because the average man like me in buying a, a Tesla. Um, two things I want to point out. One, the manufacturing, the, the small and micro entrepreneur uh, demographic of the manufacturing sector sector in Trinidad and Tobago is growing at an impressive rate and with ridiculously high quality of product and presentation right? you know as you say in that i want to commend the ministry of youth development and national service mm -hmm. over the past well last week thursday and friday 
I would have attended a youth and business symposium, which was held at Movie Town in Port of Spain, mm-hmm. and then a night market mm-hmm. on Friday at Movie Town in Port of Spain. Big up Derek Chen. Yeah. Um, where they held, where they housed and hosted many young entrepreneurs on what they do and the products that they produce and sell. Mm-hmm. Locally produced, I might add. So work is being done for these things. But we don't want to buy it here. We rather go online and buy it and bring it in. And then complain it handle Forex. It has some of that going on. And it has some I will that admit I am going I, I, I am in no way denying the fact of the difficulty it is to access Forex when you go to the bank. Eh? Mm-hmm. Meaning physical cash. I'm in no yeah. way denying that. But what I'm saying is, when there's the option to buy local, support we think from the 868. You ain't want to do that because me ain't know who that is. Right. But you're rolling the dice on anything that you import anywhere. I will openly admit, all these pretty shirts and things that you already see me wearing when I go to these different shows, hosting with Kenny and all these things like that. Some of them I buy online, I will admit. Other times, I support local. I just go buy Ufies and buy my cloth and drop my thing by my seamstress in Marabella in the back on the line in Marabella and let her sew shirts for me. Yeah, it really have a difference between when you have on a shirt and a shot. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell. And them, trust me, next year when we working again, I have some pretty shot put on already. Mm-hmm. Nice, man. And they were sewn locally. But the catch is, you, you might want to trust somebody. They could take long. Mm-hmm. Now, that in itself is something that you cannot fault somebody for in terms of, again, yeah, yeah. you can't be telling people on one side, support local, and then not turn around and, and tell, tell the suppliers, yeah. the service providers, yeah, get it together. Right? You can't be doing shoddy work, late work, yeah. giving people a run around and that type of thing. And then vex when your business not supported honestly i will i'll admit i try my best to hold my service providers because i i have to say it i dj here in ACC, i don't consider myself an influencer or a brand mm-hmm. right but what i will say is that i have a community behind me that makes me look a certain way mm-hmm. big up my baba yeah no go to say big up your, but that was actually i was gonna say it and then i stop right right yeah. Big up my barber. Big up my two seamstresses, Miss Corinne and Auntie Rose. Mm-hmm. Big up my grandmother. Big up my grandfather. Rubbing on your head with coconut oil and thing? No, 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 no. For giving me the sense of style. Mm-hmm. Because I see some pictures of my late grandfather and he was a, a, a fashionable man back in his day. Yeah, yeah. Saga boy. Yeah. So that's the thing. I have a community around me that as much as I think I'm the face of the community, it's those persons in the back room who make me look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Find a community for yourself because those are the person, you are the representation of their work. Even if I buy the clothes online, they just had to fix it, you know? Because all they know is not the tallest person. Right, 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 right. And no no matter what, when I go by the tour, (laughs) <laughs> I, could never, I could never get a pants with an Insema 28. Find a community of local service providers that put forward the work that you are going to show off. Right. Um, I know we um we probably perilously yeah, close to the hour 7 p.m. here, but it have a certain gentleman whose name or they tell me is called very often. Mm-hmm. Right? Kenderson? Yeah. Kenderson, yeah. He have a community behind him. Right. As influential a man as he is, he has a community behind him. So what is stopping you from having one? Most of us have a community around us. But it's our inability to recognize them or to, to express the proper gratitude towards them. That is make it feel like we are alone a lot of the times. Or that we do have impact or that we do have influence. Uh, I want to point out the same way that you mentioned um the tour as your uh clothing store i would like to acknowledge sir bertrand of pepper because it's no longer Bertie's. 
right? Oh, it is now Sir. It has to be Sir Bertrand because I remember when Berties entered the market. And now to get a bottle of Berties, you have to be willing to pay probably twice as much as other brands of making and, similar offerings. And then have a show, Ricardo, where there's be sampling pepper and eating it with mm-hmm. wings. Yeah. And and Berties on that yeah. show. Yeah, Berties make it. I find we could do episode sort of hot takes so no. Yeah, you you can't eat pepper at all, era. I know, right? I'll say you, that. You, you yeah, cannot eat pepper at all. So let me let me not do the people and them. No, but but on a real guys. Um, and thank you for mentioning Bertie Ricardo. Sir Bertrand. Sir Bertrand, right? Mm-hmm. Um, watch LLB. Watch Bitters. Local yeah. products making it on the international stage. Yeah. Well, Angus Turup, he not worked for yeah for years, like, like since nineteen. Since 1962, when we became a republic, um, like, yeah, you, you, have be, sorry. you have to be willing to put any work, right? Uh, one, two. Yes, you are a brand. You are a brand. You are representative of a community, whether you know it or not. Are you an intentional brand? Well, that's something different, right? Everybody out here advertising something, you know. And if you don't know you're advertising something, well, then an advertiser is using you to advertise something. Exactly. That's... Um. With that being said, guys, uh, just to close off the Forex debate, and talk there was a signing of a agreement between venezuela and trinidad to share gas profits we do hope that this generates some significant forex for our country and it will aid i don't want to go into any deeper detail of anything else with that the dragon dragon sign yeah hey we gotta get um we gotta get some yeah, we, we gotta get, get Dana, Dana, and, Dana Brandon and Brandon to come and talk. We could, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, I don't want to get into it. I just read the headline and that's that. I, right. So I'm confused the, by the rest of it. Let me let the, the energy specialists and them yeah. specialize energy. Right. But guys, really and truly, as we closing off this week, remember you are a representative of your community, and not just the community which you hail from, but the community of persons that make you look the way that you look having representatives of the public is what makes you a republic an elected rep for the public so if we have a problem with our leaders and our leaders are reps of the public then what we're saying is we have problems with people who are reflections of us we are the offering we elect officials we elect ourselves from ourselves and make us thems so if you have a problem with them it's because you have a problem with the source pool get your act together whether you know it or not you are a representative of the public so happy republic day and get your act together and for those of you who think that only a certain people from the pool a certain cup of water let's put ourselves forward you could be part of that cup of water you know yeah Stop putting your face in the sun and put yourself there. Yeah, all I'm saying is, um, they'll, they'll, they'll clean up your Facebook and your social media and give you the proper, okay. give you the proper guide you accordingly, right? They will, you will be guided accordingly. It's not like these entities not aware of the fact that they're aging and becoming irrelevant. They are well aware, Right, so they're willing to put in the work to mentor and lead and them kind of things too. If you have that drive inside you, but if you want to change the world, to quote um, Dana Tanku actually in our session that she supported us with this weekend with the Super American Foundation. If you want to change the world, you have to start with where you're at. I have to go, and I end with those words very purposefully because not that we have to go to make room for Mr. Desmond with the big but band, we but we do, but we do. But because those are now the trending words, the fourth watch words of Trinidad and Tobago. Discipline, tolerance, production, subsidies. I'm here for the comments. And now we have to go. But yeah. This is Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage. Thank you for joining us in the living room. Happy Republic Day, people. Get it together. Rep the public. Your glass is opaque. We don't know how much time remains, so whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. And I would beg to differ with Iran because as far as I'm concerned, the fourth watchword of the country is relationship and all. (laughs) 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 Relationship and all. (laughs) This is your shitty DJ Iran868. Apparently, I'm the creator of new words, right? 
But I remind you that culture is my code. And I also tell you that love is the currency. So spend some today. Let somebody know that you love them, guys. Mr. Desmond is up next with the big man. And yeah, boy, keep it locked to the True Nation station, WACK 90.1 FM. <laughs> 